Hi, I'm Vicki Lucio. I'm Angela Nunez. And uh, sorry for the noise. We're still at the Ostrich Ranch. Um, we had a meetup today, so we're still here uh, <laughs> to do the meeting, and then we'll head back home. <laughs> Um, I'm Elizabeth Berry. I'm the second grade teacher. And I'm Mrs. Devady, and I'm the other second grade teacher. And I'm Monique Durbin. I'm a third grade teacher. And I'm her partner, <laughs> Kimberly Danley, and I also teach third grade. Hi, my name is Robin Tapia, and I teach fourth grade. Hi, I am Alana Kellogg, and I teach fifth grade. Okay. And you'll get to hear a little bit more from our teachers in a bit, but I just wanted to give them a chance to introduce themselves so you could put a name to a face. So again, thank you all for coming today to see our sneak peek into Lehman Virtual Academy and what we're all about. And I'm going to begin our presentation now. So our mission here at Lehman Academy is to offer a rigorous classical education based on the traditions of Western culture where all disciplines are interrelated, allowing scholars the ability to think independently and critically. We purpose to partner with supportive parents, pursue excellence, provide a safe and challenging environment, and instill morals and values in order to produce tomorrow's leaders today. Our founder is Dr. Kevin Lehman. For those of you who have not heard of him, he is a world-renowned um, <clears throat> psychologist, radio and TV personality, educator, and speaker. He's written over 60 books related to parenting, marriage, and family living. And he's been a practicing psychologist for over 40 years, and he does live part-time here in Arizona, actually here in Tucson. Our curriculum is trivium based and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a moment. And in classical education, it is divided up by the grammar stage, logic stage and rhetoric stage. It is challenging and rigorous. For example, our math curriculum is one year advanced. So in kindergarten, for example, they're doing first grade math and third grade, they're doing fourth grade math and so forth. They're one year advanced in math. We also use classical literature for teaching. And we also believe all disciplines are interrelated. And our historical timeline is where we base our readings from. We also provide Socratic and discovery-based and authentic learning in our curriculum. So the goal of Lehman Academy is to produce critical thinkers who are aware of others and are lifelong learners. And we do believe, as I said earlier, that all disciplines are interrelated. So it would not be unusual for in science for you to have some kind of an art project that would be intermingled within the curriculum for that week. Or you may have some kind of a song that you're listening to to learn about a concept from history or science. And then our history timeline is also outlined here. In ancient times, we study ancient times in first and fifth grade. In first grade, it's an overview. And then in fifth grade, they go more in depth than a lot of those cultures. And it's the same thing for medieval times. They study it in second grade, and then they revisit it and go more in depth in sixth grade. And then we have the early modern times and the modern times. So to give you a little bit more information about what the trivium stages are in classical learning, we start out with that grammar stage, and that's a time to grow in knowledge. The kids are learning to observe learn and remember. That's where they're going to be memorizing facts. And you can expect a little bit of frustration as they're learning to memorize. They're also starting to build that knowledge. They're learning how to retrieve facts from their reading. Whenever we get to the logic stage, which is sometimes called the dialectic stage, but we call it the logic stage, they're really starting to analyze and to think and to reason. And then rhetoric stage is in our seventh and eighth grade years. And that's when they're really starting to uh, be able to argue their points and they're going to be doing a lot of judgments and presentations and expressing their opinions. So what sets us apart here at Lehman Virtual Academy is that we do provide that safe at home learning. It is classical education based. We do provide in person and online enrichment activities. We offer flexibility within the week. 
We believe relationships are core in our scholar's success, and we do work hard and strive to build relationships between our scholars and the teachers and with each other as far as scholar to scholar. We will be providing success coaches to help out with the whole virtual learning aspect. We provide lessons in virtues and values. And some of those are include caring, citizenship, perseverance, respect, responsibility, and trustworthiness. We offer what we call synchronous learning, which is whenever you are online with a live teacher. And the way that that looks for first through fifth grade is the scholar logs in four days a week for a live whole group instruction with his or her teacher. Each meeting for the week will cover different subjects. For example, Monday is language arts, Tuesday's math, Wednesday's history, Thursday is science. And in the parent is asked to sit with his or her scholar if you think that it is needed, if you think that they need help focusing. The teachers also provide small group instruction in the afternoons, and those take place one or two times a week, and they also offer scholar hours. And then whenever they get a chance to speak, they'll tell you a little bit about what that looks like. So this is kind of what online instruction looks like. It's face-to-face, -face, direct instruction. You have some interactive screen sharing. Some, and then, like we said earlier, scholar hours is also part of our curriculum. And we do offer that weekly grade level classes in core content areas. Another important piece of our platform is what we call asynchronous instruction. And that is going to be assignments that they're able to do at their own pace that the teachers assign throughout the week. Some examples of that would be Saxon math, some reading lessons from journeys, handwriting, science and history projects, viewing videos or websites that the teachers assign, and some work to do with that, sight word practice, and spelling. This gives you a little bit more information about Saxon math and uh, what it is as far as um, it, it is a spiraling curriculum. So they revisit certain concepts multiple times throughout the year to ensure mastery. We also use journeys in kindergarten through third grade. And then we in third th grade through eighth grade, we use living whole books to teach our literature. And with that, I'm going to pause for just a moment. And I'm going to let our teachers uh, go through. I'm going to start with first grade again like we did earlier and just talk a little bit about what you can expect from their classes. So I'm going to stop presenting because I know some of them do have some things to present. All right. Find it. Oh, hang on. Sorry. I'm going to present now. Turn your screen. And there we go. Okay. All right. Is it showing up, Beth? Not yet. Okay. All right. And we might we might have to just not have it because we might not have the inner the internet power here. So we'll just go over it verbally. Oh, That's it's fine. it's coming okay. it's oh. coming up right oh. now. And I just stopped it. That's <laughs> just great. I gave up. Um. Oh no. Is it still there? To so go back to where the little. Oh, you know what I did is I um. Ay yeah yeah. Sorry guys. There we go. Okay. I'll leave it alone. Yep. Is it showing up now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys. All right. So All right. So uh, again, I'm Ann uh Miss Nunez. I am one half of the first grade team. And uh so we kind of just wanted I just wanted to take the time to touch on going into first grade and uh, what we look for, right? Like we look for the ability to write write first and last name, uh, capital and lowercase letters, correctly identifying each letter name and sound, blending sounds, reading VC, CVC words accurately, uh, read kindergarten sight words with automaticity, um, the ability to count to 100, uh, count backwards from 50, write numbers to 100, add within 10, identify colors, identify shapes and identify patterns. Obviously, um, we're able to meet meet scholars where they're at. It's just kind of just a tentative of where we believe they should be coming into first grade. And that's all I have to share on that. Yeah. So, and then like with science and math, we try to integrate um, projects so that the kids get more hands-on um, learning. 
So here's like, we just are, we're working on the solar system right now and the individual planets. So in preparation for that, um, all of our scholars made solar systems that they could make reference to during the, um, during the session that we're learning about the solar system. Um, uh, Mrs. Sizer did touch on scholar hour and we do have those Monday through Friday. Um, and me and Mrs. Nunes have them in the morning from eight to nine. So every Monday through Friday, you can reach us there. It's for the parents, it's for the students, it's for the scholars to ask questions. If you're confused about an assignment, you, if something's not going right, you have questions on how to complete it. We're always there to answer your questions. Um, and then she also touched on the small groups and that's where we break down um, the scholars into more individual groups, like um, with more balanced uh, skill levels. So if we have some scholars that need some help with reading, then we would put them together and we would work on maybe sight words or reading. Okay, thank you. I'll move on to second grade. Okay, um, again, hi, I'm Miss Barry. Um, me and Miss, um, I, I cannot pronounce her last name for the life of me. That's why I was just saying Miss Jessie. It's really easy. It's Devady. Oh, yeah. It just takes practice. <laughs> we're used to calling each other by first name because we're a team. Um, <laughs> we also um, have scholar hour Monday through Friday. Um, in the afternoon, this is where, again, we allow scholars to come in and if they have any questions or concerns about homework, um, they're more than welcome to join. Um, I also have some scholars who kind of just sit in scholar hour and use it kind of as just a workspace. So they're not necessarily asking questions. They kind of just want to hang out, which I'm totally fine with, too. Um, we also have small groups as well. And, you know, for... Um, some of my lower level readers, this is where I would work with them. Again, sometimes we have to go to sight words, um, uh, or even with math, we're working on, you know, multiplication facts, or I have my more advanced where they're already trying to reduce fractions, which is, it blows my mind as a, a, with second graders, I love it. Um, we do have some projects that they do do. Um, I actually have, we were talking about um, the Mus uh, muscular systems, excuse me. So you have the cardiac, the smooth, and the skeletal. And my scholars were asked to pick one that they needed to do a presentation on today. Um, and I have, I have one. He totally went above and beyond. Um, so I can definitely here. Let me present one second. Let's see. Hi. I'm your cardiologist today, Dr. Blake, and today we are going to be talking about the cardiac muscle. Another name for your cardiac muscle is the heart. Deoxygenated blood flows through the interior vena cava and your posterior, posterior vena cava into the right atrium which is above the black this black hole right here then it flows through into the right ventricle and then goes into your lungs through the pulmonary vein and then into your left vent into your left atrium then through the left ventricle, then into your body, out of the anterior and aorta. We did can you go know? on like forever with that. Um, he did amazing though. Uh, he even had his little brother come in and he was, he showed like the stethoscope. He said like, Hey guys, this is a stethoscope. This is how we can listen to the heart. Um, definitely went above and beyond. And that's just like to one extreme that some of our scholars do some of their projects with some even just did a poster board or just had a piece of paper and drew the actual smooth muscle. One of uh, one drew a stomach. Um, so again, there's no, in the end, they, I want them to practice the speaking in front of others because eventually that's what we have to do in life. And just, it blows my mind what these second graders are willing to do. Just that research alone on these systems, um, 
but I feel like I'm talking a lot. I'm going to let Miss Jessie go. <laughs> okay. So I'm Miss DeVady and it's nice to meet you all. And of course my colleagues, we all know each other already. <laughs> so it's good to see you guys again. Um, so it's nice to see familiar faces as well. But yeah, so for second grade, we have a pretty big variety um, in how our students present, how they come in, what they need scaffolding with, and how they need to be challenged. I think the best policy is always just to treat each and every student as a gifted student and meet them where they're at and challenge them and push them forward. So um, that's the way that I run my classroom. I think it's so important to be able to support our students, but yeah, give them that edge and give them that challenge so they can meet and exceed their um, goals. So for second grade, we're really looking for increasing writing, increasing reading. We want to get that reading so it's super fluent and they're proficient and they read smoothly. And we want to get their math facts nice and solid so when they get to third grade, multiplication's easy. I know we're working on square roots, we're working on squares. Um, so just the fact that we're working on exponents already, I have most of my classes super solid in multiplication. A lot of them are very proficient in even division, multiple functions, operations, all that jazz. So it's really fun in math to be able to go and explore those venues. Um, as far as science goes, we have some great experiments and some great future scientists with the questions they ask. And of course, I think all grades can relate to that, that they're just so interesting and they are full of good ideas. So it's just finding a way to increase that skill set so they can get their ideas out there and explore the information and find what the best solution is. And then as far as writing goes, I think the biggest challenge is just making sure that they can get their vocabulary at the level where other people can not only understand it, but admire their ideas and get a sense of what they're really trying to say. So I think vocabulary is really huge in second grade. And then um, as far as history goes, it is so deep. The curriculum that goes with Lehman Academy, especially Lehman Virtual Academy, I can attest to the history knowledge just goes so deep. And so we've covered everything from the Black Death and medieval times, but we've also covered things like um, the American empires, the Aztecs and the Mayans and the Inca, and also going into the Renaissance or Renaissance, depending on how good your French is, right? But <laughs> um, I think it's just really fun to explore these things. I think our students are just above and beyond. I love my class. I can't speak highly enough of the students and the scholars that I have. Um, and I know Miss Barry, it's the same, um, but it's just, it's an excellent opportunity to really have scholars be challenged and be able to enjoy school. I know for me, one of the my favorite things to do is just games with the kids and have them do those academic games and really explore in a non-evaluative way. Um, and then be able to take quizzes and, and do other projects, class projects and things like that. So we have the full spectrum. Thank you. I'm gonna move on to third grade. Hello, again, my name is Miss Durbin and we, me and Miss Danley are a team and we're gonna show you a presentation and collaborate together. So I'm gonna present, give you just one second. Ms. Stanley, can you see our presentation? Yes, it's there. Perfect. So welcome to third grade. Um, we're just going to do a real quick review, and Ms. Caesar already went over this, but our live class is daily schedule. This is what it looks like Monday. We teach an hour of ELA, Tuesday math, Wednesday history, Thursday chemistry, and then Scholars Daily Schedule, we have our live lessons offered at three different times, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and then we do have scholar hours and small group. And just to give you an idea of what your child's day would look like is developmental reading is about 90 minutes daily. Language arts is 60 minutes daily. Mathematics is 60 minutes daily and social studies 30 minutes daily. And we would add on to that science 30 minutes daily. Yes, sorry. 
And here is a math sample lesson of what you would see in Schoology. And this just gives you an idea of a typical day of what is expected of our scholars. And um, it just gives you a little bit of an overview. We always start off with practicing um, our math facts. Um, and right now we're working on division and we do a two minute time test. And then they have mental math that they work on and then problem solving as well. And then we move on to our objective for the day. And then we go into our new concept and what they're learning. And we do interact um, quite a bit. Um, this is a little bit of a caption of um, how we teach virtually. And we use a lot of slideshows that we interact with. And um, here's just a little bit of a snippet of what we do. It says, your turn. Who can help Miss D? Let's estimate the hearts. And then they have a visual. So we start off with a think about it question, um, of what, a little bit of a review. And then we go into our lessons. But um, these pictures show interactive interaction that we do to teach our different math concepts. And you can see that we use dice. We also use money um, to capture their, their attention and gain their interest. So Ms. Stanley, do you want to continue? Sure. Um, the next slide is our sample, some sample ELA lessons. Um, where our live lessons, we do use a lot of slideshows to kind of guide the lessons and to give some color and excitement. Um, we ask a lot of questions and we have the scholars um, communicate and, um, and interact with us and each other. So they can um, use whiteboards. Sometimes they use the, the chat to type in answers and then we, we have a lot of discussions that way. The other, the kind of colorful paper, uh, paper looking thing there is um, our daily kind of our daily assignments and we include spelling, our journeys book. Sometimes we have a literature book um, that we do separately, um, some grammar and some writing. And the next slide gives you just a couple examples of what our students are doing. It's pretty cool. Um, we start out with a, a teaching them to write one paragraph well. And we use a lot of um, we make videos so that we can guide the scholars through that during the week. So this is just an example um, earlier in the year of a one paragraph narrative where they were writing kind of just from their their own opinions and ideas. And then the next slide shows you um, kind of where we're at now. They're writing three paragraphs um, about a topic from our history or science. So they've really come a long way. and. Um, we're actually really proud of them. And um, I think they're pretty proud of themselves as well. Yes. And then our next slide, um, our history is very rich. And the time period for third graders is from the 1500s to the 1850s. Just to give you an idea of who we have studied currently is Catherine the Great, Shahajahan, Jahan, Sacagawea, and Toussaint a Louisville. And so um, we do a variety of individuals. We've also done the Boston Tea Party. Um, but our focus is, is that they study an individual for the week and they learn facts about them. And here's just a little caption of some of a uh, of what a copy book page looks like. So we were studying Napoleon and you can see that they have to sketch him out and then they had to write some bullet points and facts that they learned about him that week. And so this just shows you a little bit of a caption. And we also do study during history. Um, we do geography and our focus is uh, this year learning the oceans, um, the continents and currently um, we are learning the 50 states of the United States. Um, and they do a fabulous job with their copy books. Some of their artwork is amazing. And they, they love to also do something that we really focus on here at Lehman Academy is our recitations. And we do this in history well, where they learn how to narrate. Um, and so they do a presentation in front of our class and they have to memorize um, a narration. And they do fabulous with this in third grade. And then our science. I'm going to go back to you, Miss Stanley. Thanks. Um, so you can see that 
it well first of all i have to say i was completely intimidated um, to teach chemistry to third grade but who would have known it's been the 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 biggest success of probably my career so um these kids love chemistry and so we do a lot every live lesson has been a, an experiment and so we do some kind of um some kind of demonstration or experiment the kids get to um ask a question make a hypothesis um, then they record their observations, and then at the end, we come up with a conclusion, something that we learned from the demonstration. And they they really look forward to it. They're so smart. Sometimes they ask me questions, and we have to go back and do a little more research <laughs> in order to answer them. But they, they've just loved it. So that's I really think that um, chemistry in third grade has been um, pretty successful and, and very, very fun. And I'll second that it's so much fun and it's amazing the questions that they come up with and their own little observations as well. So with that, thank you for your time. And if anybody has any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them for you. So I'm going to close this and come back to you all. Nope. Oh, okay. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I think we're on to fourth grade. My, my name is Miss Tapia and I teach fourth grade. And let me go ahead and open up my PowerPoint. Okay, can everyone see it? Okay, so I'm not going to yeah. repeat some of the things that they've already talked about as far as scholar hour um, and small groups that that goes across doesn't matter what grade level you're in we do that. Um, so this is my fourth grade overview. This is a typical daily schedule for ELA. We start our day off with recitation practice, which takes about five minutes. Then we move on to spelling and vocabulary practice, which takes anywhere from 10, 10 minutes to 20 minutes, depending on the day. Um, on Mondays, they're looking words up on the dictionary and writing down syllables and the definitions and the part of speech. So that day takes a little bit longer. But most days, they're just practicing, um, memorizing the definitions for their vocabulary spelling words or practice practicing writing them so that they can spell them correctly on Fridays. Then I usually have a reading skills sheet that has something to do with one of the fourth grade curriculum skills that they need to know in fourth grade. Um, then we also have literature where they're reading um, a, a living book that has something to do with our history topic. So in, um, when we're talking about Civil War at the beginning of the year, they're reading Mr. Lincoln's Drummer, which is all about the Civil War. When we're talking about, um, right now we're doing World War II, and the book that they're reading is Number of the Stars, which is about World War II. So the literature always matches up with, with the history. Um, our we do Shirley Grammar, and Shirley Grammar talks about the different parts. Basically, you're breaking down a sentence and you're looking for the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, the adverbs, prepositions, objects of the prepositions, and so on and so forth. So that's anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes, probably three to four days a week. Um, in fourth grade, we've been doing a program called IEW Writing, which stands for Institute for Excellence in Writing. And it has really focused on writing a really solid paragraph um, and then building its way up to being able to write a five paragraph essay, which we wrote um, recently a five paragraph essay about the scholar's favorite season. And they have to cite evidence from the resources that they find and be able to um, quote it as, as, a cite, as a cited sentence. Um, and now they're working on their wax museum piece. So they are researching a famous person from our history and are um, going to be writing a five paragraph essay with that. So we also do values and virtues and I do love to integrate those with my um, reading of our literature. So there's usually a book that is a, a, a picture book that I find a video of that is read aloud to them that focuses on the value and the virtues of the month. 
And then we also integrate those into our writing with not only the historical figures that we're learning about at the time, but also the characters in the literature books that we're doing. And then I always have uh, some chapters for read aloud um, for just pure enjoyment. And then they also have time for independent reading. And usually the way I have that is I tell them whatever number of hours that you need or minutes in order to reach your five hour requirement of school for each day, that would be your independent reading time. I do um, pretty much pack their day with stuff. So lots of times they tell me, I don't have time to do independent reading. So um, unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast. The higher up they get in the grades, the more um, material there is to cover and therefore it just takes longer. Um, here's an example of a book project that my scholars just did. So in reading, I do individual skills, but we also do reading projects. So when they finished reading their last book, they had to, it was, um, the book was Where the Red Fern Grows. So at the end, they had three weeks that they were working on a project. And so the first week I told them to do the front cover and then to describe the characters. And then the second week they were focusing on the other half of the characters and if they liked the book and why, and if they would rec them, recommend the book to an, another scholar and why. And then on the third week, they were working on a five to 10 sentence summary over the whole book. So I broke it, the project down. It was a three week project. Here's kind of a sample of a, of a scholar's work. Um, so this was their front cover. So they had to come up with their own design uh, for where the red fern grows. And then they described, they had to draw a little picture of, of some five main characters and they had to put their name and then describe why they were important to the book or something that that character did in the story. And so here's a continuation. Then they had to tell you why they liked the book or why they didn't like it. Um, and then if they would recommend it to a friend and why or why not. And then um, the summary and the summary was supposed to be anywhere from 10 to 20 sentences long. So that's just kind of a sample. I do lots of projects um, to kind of keep it fun, but they're also learning skills as well. Here is an example of me um, integrating literature with history, or excuse me, with the values and the virtues. So this was also about where the red fern grows. And at the time we were doing truth, beauty, and goodness. Those were the values and virtues of the month. And they had to write where in the book or which character showed truth. And they had to describe what the activity, what, what the event was that um, the character showed truth, beauty, or goodness. So, for example, for truth, little Anne is a little accident. Well, tr oh, little Anne has a little accident while trying to cross the frozen river. Little accident, that means that the ice broke and she fell in. She was hanging on with her claws, with her head just above the water. Billy tries to reach out to her, but the ice breaks underneath his weight. He falls onto the shore of the river. Just then, as she's starting to slip under, Billy hooks her, col her collar and pulls her out with the lantern hook. He saves his dog's life. So that's an example of truth. And then beauty, he, he starts a fire to warm little Anne and old Anne. He starts massaging her, all her limbs, until she can stand on her own. He gets into the river and fishes little Anne out with the lantern hook. It does not matter for him if he gets sick with the cold water. He just wants to save little Anne. So that's an example of, of something beautiful, a sacrifice that somebody does for somebody else. And then it goes on with goodness as well. So I try to integrate um, the values and the virtues with our uh, literature books, but also with our history timeline and the characters and people that we're learning about in history as well. Um, so daily history schedule, we uh, have a specific history topic that usually involves note taking using a graphic organizer and a PowerPoint that takes around 15 to 20 minutes. I also include a lot of videos that go with the, whatever the topic is for that day. They do occasional timelines and maps. Um, we do a lot of timelines and maps with classical education. And then we do occasional Socratic discussions and or projects. So I'm going to show you, um, this is a, an example of a type of timeline that we would do. This was over the Great Depression, the stock market crash, and the Dust Bowl. And so it's copy work. We still do copy work in fourth grade. So the, the events are listed there, and the scholars have to copy them as best they can 
making sure capitals are there, punctuation is there, that they spell words correctly. It's a skill that's really necessary even in fourth grade because they don't pay attention to details. Oftentimes they'll just slop things down. But if they know that they're getting graded on every little detail, they really have to focus. And that is something that we still do in fourth grade. Here's an example of a type of a map. So this was over the Dust Bowl where they had to color the United States, but then they had to locate where the Dust Bowl actually occurred in the United States, color it a different color and locate the names of the states and the, the capitals for those states. And they had to include a key. Um, in history also, we will read about, we were, when we were doing labor unions, we read a reading A to Z book about um, different people who were important in the labor union. And one of the people that um, a scholar chose to research was Cesar Chavez. And then they had to create a poster to share in our live class about an important figure um, who was involved with the labor union and then share what they learned, facts that they learned about them. So this is an example of something that they would create. And a lot of the projects we share in our live classes. So they're teaching each other about things that they've learned and, and, and um, researched. A sample day, um, Mrs. Uh, Durbin did a wonderful job showing you pictures of what a sample day of Saxon math would look like um, using the textbook. So mental math practices around five to 10 minutes along each day. Then we have math facts practice where we're still working on our basic multiplication and division. Then we have a target skill where there's a video lesson that I've either created or have found online for scholars to watch. Then they uh, focus on the lesson practice by practicing that skill. It takes around 10 to 15 minutes. And then they do the written practice, which is that um, part of the Saxon math program that just repeats itself over and over. They see the same skills, it spirals over and over. So throughout the year, um, they are seeing the same skills that they learned at the beginning of the year and then middle of the year and then towards the end of the year and they just keep coming back. So they practice them and hopefully they are cemented and they don't forget them. And then I give an exit ticket each with each lesson that takes about five minutes. And the exit ticket is over the actual target lesson. And those skills usually come directly out of the um, the examples that are in the textbook or the lesson practice questions. Um, a daily schedule for science in, in fifth, fourth grade, we teach physics, which is a lot of fun. And so the science topics, um, often I teach with a PowerPoint and a graphic organizer as well. And it takes around 10, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And then I also find lots of videos um, for them to watch that go along with the topic. They love to participate in Socratic discussions. So, um, for example, we just started magnets at the beginning of the week and they had a Socratic discussion The the job, their, their task on Monday was to go on a scavenger hunt in their house looking for all the different places they could find magnets. And so they were supposed to make a list of what room they were in and what magnets they found. And then they were supposed to go online and, and research common household goods that have magnets. And then the third thing that they were going to discuss was which product had a magnet in it that surprised them the most. So they participated in a Socratic discussion where they had to write at least three solid detailed sentences that answered all three parts of those. And then they share that and then other people can read it and they can respond back to them. And so they talk back and forth and uh, amongst themselves in a discussion about whatever the topic is. So I do a lot of Socratic discussions in science and history. Here's an example of a copybook page that um, some of my scholars did when we were studying Sir Isaac Newton. And it was just sort of a graphic organizer. They had to fill out the information. They read articles about him. They read a short mini book about him. And then there was a PowerPoint about him. And then they had to go in and fill out some information, important information about Sir Isaac Newton. So we do a lot of copy books and the copy book pages are about specific people, um, our artists and our composers, because as part of our curriculum at Lehman, we study the uh, artists as well as composers, even though we do have an art teacher, each grade level is responsible for focusing on specific artists and composers as well. So they do a lot of copy, work, copy book pages for those people. Uh, and I don't, this one I know, I had an example here and let's see if I can get it to run. 
at our time yesterday. Let's see if I can. Okay, now I'm going to have to share it to you with you again. Give me a second. It's a video, and this is just a sculpture that the scholars did um, on. Um, uh oh, now it's vanished. My PowerPoint. Sorry. If I can bring it back again. Can you still see my PowerPoint slide? Okay. Yes. No. It's gone. Okay. Well, I may not be able to. It's just they built they built a um, a model of objects that had to be in balance, so they were able to spin it, and it should be able to stand like on a little stick on top of something solid, but it should be balanced in such a way that it would spin without falling over. And so they they could use anything they could find around their house to do it. And um, they were using marshmallows. They were making things out of clay. Um, pieces of fruit, um, you know, things from the recycle bin, just all sorts of things. And so those were kind of cool to share. Um, can you see my PowerPoint again? <laughs> yes? <laughs> no? Okay. Sorry, I have to stop it and start again. And I think I'm to the end anyway. So um, the scholars, I love, for science and history, I love for them to, I guess it's kind of flipped classroom. I, I give them an assignment and a task, and I ask them to bring it to class so that they can share and teach the other scholars about that, that particular subject. So with they did a lot of reading about balance and symmetry, and then they created their own, and then they shared them with the class. So that was a lot of fun in, in our science. And that is the end for me for fourth grade. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. Hello, everybody. I do not have a PowerPoint, um, so you overestimated me. But um, I won't bore you again with the schedule. The, it's this, the same Monday. I do ALA, Tuesday math, Wednesday history, science, and then I do scholar hours, small groups throughout the week, too. Um, when they get to me, we're kind of preparing them for uh, middle school. So a lot of my focus in ELA, we still do Shirley Grammar and things like that. And I'll walk them through Shirley Grammar during the ELA. We will discuss it. We'll talk about it, make sure nobody's missing the different patterns that we go over in the sentences. Um, but a lot of our focus is writing the um, I want to get them at the end of the year ready to write that five paragraph essay so that they're ready to go on to middle school and able to format that they're they're able to you know go through their rough draft and be able to see where they're making mistakes with their spelling and with their grammar and obviously i'm there to help them out and walk them through that through the year um, I'm a really big, I love writing, so I'm super big with writing, so I like to make it fun. I believe that it should be fun. So um, we'll kind of jump back and forth from writing a five paragraph essay, and then we do writing prompts. The essays, I don't mind if they type them because typing is a huge skill, especially virtually. And then the writing prompts, they need to be handwritten because that is also a huge skill that we can't lose. So um, with the writing prompts, it allows them to be creative. It allows me to better understand them and get to know them. Um, and just see kind of how deep that they, you know, they can get into thinking about things. And then I'll expand on it to the end of the year. So maybe at the beginning, I want like a really juicy paragraph, but then by the end, I want at least two in those writing prompts. Um, and I always tell them, you know, make me laugh, make me cry. If you can make me laugh or cry, you're winning with your writing. So that's what their goal is, all of their goal. Um, in math, very similar, we're doing Saxon, we work a year ahead, um, but uh, while we're working on that, I'll go over every single lesson because they only have me for that day. So I wanna make sure they are prepared, they know those concepts, I'll go over all of the different concepts and then they have me for scholar hours to, you know, if they need extra help with that. Um, and then I do do math tests usually on Fridays or I have um, activities. I learn math better real world, so I like to relate those activities to the concepts we're learning and real world math, so they can really bring that in and put those together. Um, science, history, uh, two of my very favorites, so I really like them to have a lot of fun. Um, 
with history, we do ancient times from the earliest nomads to the last Roman Empire in fifth grade. Um, I, you know, I use the PowerPoints, I use the Nearpods, um, but I also really like them to get into history and really understand how those ancient civilizations lived and how those cities, towns, villages were built. So I do do a lot of projects where they are allowed to bring in um, they're allowed to use Legos. They're allowed to use Roblox, Minecraft, things like that. I let them think outside of the box and they can build me an aqueduct. They can build me the Colosseum inside of those. And I want to see, and they love sharing them with their classmates. And so they learn from that. And then they have to provide five facts. Uh, we also did a history dress up day where they dressed up from anyone or anything from history. They could come to class, cameras off. They had to give three, um, like, hints so we could try and guess what they were. Some of them, I, I had no idea who they were. I was like, what, How'd you do, how did you think of that to come to class like that? So that was really fun. Um, and then they do, we do like a comic style. So um, they'll read the history book throughout the week and then they have to retell it. We also do the timelines, things like that. That's, that's a Lehman thing, that's what we do. Um, and then for science, even though we're virtual, I still want them doing those science projects. I want them having fun because that's what science is all about. Um, I use a lot of the, I do use the Nearpods for science, but I also use my own PowerPoints. And then um, like when we did weather, they did, uh, somebody was doing a weather forecast. It was hilarious. We had one student whose parents got involved and threw a car at him because they were doing a hurricane, like a little, like miniature car went flying past the camera. It was hilarious, but they had a lot of fun with that. And then they'll do news broadcasts for like um, when we did oceans, because you know we all know the issues related to the oceans. So they did a huge news broadcast on that. So um, we really like to get into it and have a lot of fun. And I think relating it to world, real world things that they see every day really instills that learning in them. So um, yeah, that's kind of the overview of fifth. I think I touched on everything. Um, so that's me. Do you want to add anything, Ms. Valente? That kind of everything. I, I was muted. Sorry. Um, oh. <laughs> no, you did. No, you covered everything. Yeah, we got everything. <laughs> Forget. <laughs> So those are our teachers for first through fifth grade. And thank you so much for the teachers uh, coming today to share what their classes look like and a little snapshot of what you can expect in their class. I have a PowerPoint that I generally present and it's a little long, so I'm gonna just skip through some of that, but we can still share that with you. And we'll make sure that you get that if you signed up today. But uh, I wanted to get through to the end because I know that we said we would be going until two and it's almost two now um, and but I did want to introduce Mr. Hesbridge to you he's he's the uh, Schoology guru so we do use the Schoology platform and he gets you signed up in Schoology so whenever you have an issue you might have to contact him but typically Schoology runs pretty smooth and we don't have a lot of issues but if you would have an issue, then he would be who you would contact. And usually we show you what Schoology looks like, but we have some snapshots here. So I'll just kind of quickly go through this so that we can get to the end of our presentation. So at Lehman Virtual Academy, we do provide you with both print and digital resources. So your scholars do get hardbound books because we do recognize the importance of them actually having hardbound copies of books so that they can flip through and read. And that, But we do also provide digital resources too that they're able to go to and do some research and we those vary throughout the year but Miss um, Tapia referred to reading A to Z. Reading A to Z is one of the uh, resources that we provide our scholars and there's there's a lot of books on there that they're able to read at, as far as whole group and then individually at their level as well. And then this just gives a little bit of information about Schoology. And generally, like I said, we do show you a little bit about that, but we have some, some snapshots. So we'll just go through that so that we can get through the presentation. So every teacher has a, a little bit of a different format for their classes, but generally they have the it sign um, in by the week and then each day has lessons. They are in order. So lesson one, it'd be important to do lesson one before you do lesson two and so forth. Some scholars do like to do two lessons in a day because they know on Friday they're gonna be busy, they're gonna be traveling. So that's one of the great things about Lehman Virtual Academy is we do have a little bit of flexibility. So if they still have a lot of power and 
they are ready to keep learning on Monday because they're ready to go. They can go through a couple of lessons on Monday. So they have a little bit of extra time on Friday when maybe they kind of have had had a week and they're ready to rest. As long as the work gets done within that week, the teachers uh, grade it within that week and they just ask that you have it provided to them so that they can get it graded before the weekend. And we do allow seven days. So they have it uploaded to you before by Monday at 8 a.m. And then some scholars do kind of go into weekend sometimes if they find that they ran out of time or they had a dance recital or something throughout the week. But they but once Sunday comes, it's time for the next week. So we just try to keep it tightened up within that seven days. Every scholar also gets their own personal Gmail. And so it's really important that either you or your scholar or both of you are checking your Gmail account because that is how the teacher communicates with you. And we also ask that you are also checking your email account that you registered with. And if there's a better an email account, please let the teachers know because that is their primary way of communicating with you since we're in a virtual environment. And again, we do believe in partnering with the parents in a virtual environment, especially you are going to be key for us to help your scholar. And it's real important for us to have that open communication with you. And like I said, we, we do believe we have a art and music. I'm just going to go through the end here. So you can see some of our enrichment opportunities that we offer. We have a lot of clubs that we offer both virtually and in person. And one of the great things with our virtual scholars is that they are allowed to attend any clubs or sports at campuses as well. So let's say you live in Marana and you're, you have a son that really wants to play baseball. He's able to go to Marana and try out for the baseball team, but still pe be part of the virtual school. So that's a, that's great for our scholars because then they still get to interact with scholar, their peers uh, on a campus and they're allowed to have that flexibility of the virtual school. And we've already sort of talked about our skip typical school week and our sample schedules and our commitment. We do um, honor all IEPs and 504s. So if you do have a scholar that has a 504 or IEP, we do adjust it to the virtual environment and we do have a virtual um, ESS team or exceptional scholars team that we work with, works with our scholars and they are actually specialized in that type of an environment virtually they offer you uh, those services and so we just ask that you have at a minimum a Chromebook or a tablet a web camera because it's very important that you're able to see your teacher and your teacher is able to see you and as well as a microphone so that you're able to communicate back and forth with one another as well as a scanner or a smartphone to upload your work because sometimes your teachers do want to see handwritten things. Everything's not going to be on the computer so you have to take a picture of it and I, I think some of them already talked about the importance of that skill of handwriting so they will want you to sometimes write. And then our supply list is online and then we do have a reading list as well so you can go online and see the books that we're reading. This is for example is our third grade reading list. And then um, the last thing is how to enroll. So if you go up here to enrollment, you're going to go to Arizona schools. And then enrollment for 2021, 2022. And that takes you to where you will create your own account and that would help you with enrollment. And you would just go through and create an account. Oh, I see that I was not presenting. Sorry about that. Let me go back. So I'll try to go back one more time. Sorry about that. It didn't present. So, um, this is just giving you a little bit more information about the parents' role. We do offer art and music. We have a fine arts teacher, our clubs, the typical school week, our sample week, the 504s and what you need to get started, our supply list, 
and how to enroll. And then this is where you would go to enroll. Up here where it says Arizona Schools, and then it takes you to an enrollment page. You would click on the green button and that's where you create your account to enroll. And with that, if anyone has any questions for individual grades, our teachers are here and available to help or answer questions if you want clarity on any kind of assignments. And we also have Mr. Hesbridge who's here to talk about any IT questions that you might have. And I'm going to pause my, I'm going to stop presenting and give everyone a chance to ask questions. You can either say it out loud or you can type it. Okay, if no one has any questions, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, teachers. I know that you all are very busy. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and be a part of this. And Mr. Hesbridge, thank you for coming as well. And we also have uh, our office staff here. So I'd like to thank the office staff for coming and listening in. And thank you everyone for being here today. Have a great day and a great rest of your week.